gray pants, black batting helmets. That's your team colors presented by Centos. We are set to go. Luke Coleman winds and fires, and the right-hander delivers the first pitch. Time of first pitch, 102 Central Time as Parcell, the center fielder, fouls it straight back into the screen, and we are underway. It's 0-1. Fastball from Holman on the first offering. Righty versus lefty matchup to get it started, and the 0-1. There's a strike letter high, and it's nothing and two. I mentioned you talked about it before we got started today, Buzzy, and Luke Coleman, excellent performance. Maybe the best start we've seen for the Tigers so far as far as all things considered. The 0-2 pitch, a little high and inside. Good 0-2 pitch. Parcell backs out of the way, and it's one and two. But five and a third in his debut last week against Central Arkansas. Only one walk, had ten strikeouts, only three hits. And through five and a third shutout innings. Breaking ball just missed. Nice little bender there from Holman, but it evens the count two and two. Yeah, and Holman's always around the strike zone, and you saw that last week with just the one walk. He's just fills up the strike zone and going to make it difficult for an offense when you do that. 2-2 two -two pitch. Comes back with a curveball. Cold strike three. Parcel down on strikes, and Holman off to a great start. Fans the first batter he sees. One down here in the top of the first inning. Yeah, good overhand curveball. It just drops off the table. And Holman with the fastball, he stays up in the zone. Maybe more than you'd like. You know, he doesn't really throw a pitch at the knees like tra traditional pitchers, but he gets a lot of guys out. We talked about what he did at Alabama last year. He was their start. He was their Friday night guy. So he knows how to pitch, but that big curveball is tough to lay off when you throw fastballs at the letters. Another left-hander, Arado, stands in. He'll swing at the first pitch, foul it out of play left side. I thought you made a very good observation. You told me yesterday when you came in, we were talking about looking forward to seeing Holman's second outing. You said, hey, they don't look alike, but from a pitching standpoint, a lot of similarities to what Holman does with his fastball that we saw successful for Ty Floyd. Here's the 0-1. Missed high, evens it up one ball and one strike. Yeah, that fastball is going to be 93, 94 miles an hour, maybe even touching 95 and... We saw Ty Floyd last year have a lot of success with that, getting guys out. The 1-1, again, a swing, but a foul ball out of play, and it's 1-2 and two to Arado. Now, what I think, Hol and Ty Floyd was able to, to work and get better at his off-speed pitch. I think Holman has that right now. He's already got the good off-speed pitch where it took Ty Floyd, uh, you know, maybe a year or two to really work on uh, that good breaking pitch. One out, nobody on. The 1-2, again, foul down the left field line, catches the screen at the very end. It will remain one ball and two strikes. Time now for your game day weather report brought to you by AccuTemp. Chance of power outages never. Get a whole home generator from AccuTemp. Keep the power in your hands. Again, beautiful day weather-wise. 74 degrees, sunshine, blue skies, but a brisk wind, much like yesterday, blowing left to right towards the Intimidator in right field. Here's a ground ball. A couple of bounces to shortstop. Milam, the freshman, scoops, throws in time, two down. Yeah, good to see a play early in the game for Milam at shortstop, making his first start at short, and gets kind of a just a routine ground ball. That's what you want to see, and picks it up, scoops it up nicely, throws a missile across the diamond for the second out of the inning. Milam in at shortstop for Braswell, getting the day off. Two down, we'll see Colin Summerhill, the DH in Thursday's game, playing catcher today for the Huskies, and a breaking ball in for a strike, and it's 0-1. Tommy White at third, the aforementioned Milam at short. Josh Pearson again back to second base, and Jared Jones at first. It's Bingham, Kling, and Brown left to right in the outfield. The 0-1, fastball down the middle, jumps ahead, staying ahead, nothing to two. Hayden Travinsky getting the start behind the plate, completes the battery with right-hander Luke Holman. Now giving Brady Neal a, a day off, he's been... Neil's been taking some balls off that right hand here lately. Need to get, make sure that thing is good and healed up. Two down, Holman. Here's the 0-2. Called strike three. Breaking ball, letter high. Husky squad. Get ten runs on eight hits. Paxton Kling to lead it off. The first pitch offered up from Stewart. Misses low, and we're off and running here in the bottom of the first. 1-0. Kling awaits. There's a strike. One ball and one strike. Kling batting 313. Came into the weekend batting under 200. Here's the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Couldn't get around on that one. Find it. Locate it. It's 1 and 2. 
Yeah, Clang, I don't think saw the ball particularly well in that opening weekend against Central Arkansas and VMI, but starting to see it a little bit better, swing the bat. Breaking ball, fouled off by Kling to stay alive, still one and two. Hit that home run in the Thursday game against Northern Illinois that had two, another two hits again yesterday in the loss to Stony Brook. But a very athletic guy, guy that tons of speed. Already made an incredible play in center field earlier in the year or earlier in this uh, opening weekend. Stays away. This misses outside from Stewart. It's two balls, two strikes. We mentioned that Stewart's going to throw a bunch of cutters. He's already shown Kling a, a couple in this at bat. And the cutter is going to be 80, 81 miles an hour. It's not a blazer. 2-2. Two, two. Big swing, but fouled straight down into the dirt. Maybe came off the cleat of Kling. Makes it two and two. Last year, of course, 57 games for Paxton. Had 22 starts. The majority of those coming early in the season. Again, had a hamstring injury in mid-April. Slowed him down just a bit, both figuratively and literally. Here's the 2-2, launched in the air to left field. Coming in on the run and eventually making the play is Arado. He went back, forward, left, right. Again, as that one hit to left field, fighting into the wind. And good job by Arado in left field to get to it to record the first out here in the bottom of the first. Yeah, a little out in front of that one was Kling and hit it a little off the end of the bat. You said it, Chris. Going to take a big one to get it out to left field anyway, and that one wasn't hit particularly well off the end of the bat. Pearson stands in. First pitch missed inside, 1 and 0. Oh. Josh batting 235. Again, has played all three games thus far. Started all three games this weekend. 1 0. Oh. Just missed with a breaking ball, did Stewart. Two balls, no strikes. Started against Northern Illinois in right field. Went two for three with three runs batted in. Three runs scored and his first two home runs of the year. So this one's short of the plate. It'll be three balls, no strikes to Pearson. Yesterday was at second base. Again, not much doing for LSU offensively up and down the lineup. Pearson went 0 for 3. There's a strike at the knees with the take on. It's three and one. Yeah, not a lot to get excited about over yesterday's game. We're trying to flush that one as quick as we can, and that's the sign of a good team anyway. Three and one pops straight up into the air behind second base. Dimitrov, the shortstop, loses it, and then the center fielder Parcel comes in late. It comes off the heel of his glove. Pearson standing at second base. And what I was going to say is the sign of a good team is after a loss, you come back and, and get a, a big dub. You don't have back-to-back -back losses and get on a losing streak. LSU will get hopefully back in the winning column today, but nothing's going to be easy today. We saw it yesterday some, with the sun and the wind. Guys struggled in the outfield to make plays, and when that ball goes up in the air, it is not routine by any means. You know, watching the replay here, it looked like initially, initially Dimitrov, the shortstop, was behind second base. I think he was pointing up trying to help somebody else find it because I don't think he had confidence he could make the play. And then Parcell coming in deep from center field got under it, but it, he overran it, actually hit the top of his glove and landed in the grass. So Pearson... Down at second base. That'll bring Tommy White to the plate with one down. First delivery, a called strike to White. And it's 0-1. Tommy batting 364 here on the early season. Swing and a ground ball down the third baseline. Foul. It'll be 0-2. He's got three runs batted in. Chance for an RBI here with Pearson down at second base. A board on a fielding error. Assessed to the center fielder, Charlie Parcell. Here's the 0-2 to White. Breaking ball called strike three. That was a looper that dropped in. Maybe caught the outer half of the plate. Tommy didn't like it, but he's down on strikes. That's Jackson Stewart. Stewart. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> he, went, he looped that curve in against Tommy White and got it full. Well, he went three straight curve balls, and that's not normally his go-to pitch. Again, it's the cutter, but he went three straight to Tommy White and made three really good pitches. We'll see Brady Neal as he'll come in bat as the DH today, and he'll take a swing, get a little piece, but held on to by the catcher, Summerhill, and it's 0-1. Again, back with the cutter after Buzzy mentioned he went all curveballs to Tommy White. This pitch misses low to Brady, 1-1. One one. 
clean flight out to left field to lead it off. First out of the inning, Pearson would reach on that fielding error on a pop fly to center field. Here's the one-one. Swing and a miss. I'll make it one and two. Yeah, another cutter, and again, it's not like it's a blazing pitch, but when you see, it's a pitch that a lot of people in college just don't throw, and so it's a it's a new pitch that look pretty difficult to square up. A one-two pitch to Neal. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes Neal. Jackson Stewart able to record his second punch out. Both coming here in the bottom of the first. Dents it off for Northern Illinois. No score. Top of the second inning. And the first pitch from Holman to strike. And on the inner half, and it's nothing and one to Kelly. Batting 296 so far on the season. Here's the 0 1 from Holman. Working quickly and misses outside. One ball and one strike. <laughs> Kelly two for four. An RBI and a run scored. The 10 2 loss to LSU on Thursday. 4 5 and 6 2 up here in the top of the second. As Holman misses again away. Two balls, one strike. Taking a look at today's ingredients for success. Brought to you by BRQ Seafood and Barbecue, the official catering service of LSU Athletics. First, the 2 1 pitch from Holman to the plate. A little flare towards right field will drop down for a base hit. Huskies with the first hit of the game for either team. The leadoff man aboard in Kelly. Go, uh, talking to Coach Jay Johnson down in the clubhouse before the game, he really felt like he was going to be honed in today watching how his team bounces back. Again, a lot of baseball, 56 regular season games, first loss yesterday, but again, a team made up of some newcomers, some young players. He wanted to see how they were able to put that behind them quickly, get back with the focus on today's game. Runner at first, and the pitch to the plate to Harper, the DH for the Huskies, misses outside 1-0. and Well, you hear it all the time. Baseball is a game of failure. It's how you handle the failures, and no team has ever gone 56-0, and and I don't think it's not going to happen again this year for the Tigers. So you got to just how you react to that failure and how you come back uh, the next day. Runner at first, here's a swing, half-hearted one by Harper, and it evens a count 1-1. One and one. Well, last year's team certainly mastered the art of putting both wins and losses behind them. Illustrated by that championship series in Omaha. Here's could be two, a bouncing ground ball to Milam, to Pearson, the relay to first, to Jones. In time for the third twin killing of the year for LSU. 6-4-3, and there's two gone here in the top of the second inning. Great, great turn by Pearson. Milam. Been very impressed with him. Milam yesterday turned a double play from second base as he was playing that against Stony Brook. And I really like his hands. He's got good quick hands, gets the ball out of the glove quickly, got it to a good feed to Pearson, and he was able to make a strong throw over to Jones. Christian Seegers comes to the plate. Huskies third baseman swings and misses. It's nothing in one. So with two down, Seegers trying to keep the inning alive here. Holman certainly has other ideas. Luke fires the 0-1. There's a strike at the belt, and it's nothing and two. Holman again last year at Alabama. 31 appearances, had 15 starts for the Crimson Tide. 111 strikeouts on the year. Here's the 0-2. Breaking ball catches the outer half. Called strike three. And Luke Holman with three Tigers on the mound. LSU comes to the plate looking to start some offense. Hayden Travinsky will lead things off for LSU here at the bottom of the second. No score. Jackson Stewart misses on the first offering just at the knees. It's 1 0. Travinsky hitting 381 on the year, getting the start today at catchers. Again, he watches one drop low for ball two. 2 0. Stewart fires to the plate. Breaking ball missed outside. Now, three balls, no strikes to Travinsky, who has one homer on the year. Has earned five walks this season. There's the 3 0, and he'll earn his six. That one missed high. So the leadoff man aboard for LSU, their second base runner of the game. And we'll see Jake Brown, the freshman, hitting a impressive 438 to start his campaign as a Tiger. Yeah, Jake Brown, the left handed 6'2, 194 pound freshman out of Sulphur, Louisiana, went to Sulphur High School. 
really good baseball program over their past Lake Charles. Pitch misses inside to Brown. The first offering scoots him off the plate. It's one and zero. Oh. Stewart's one zero -oh delivery. Off speed and a strike just below the belt. One ball, one strike. We mentioned Stewart only one inning of work this season. Here's the one one. I want to strike at that breaking ball on the inside corner and it's one and two. And we saw Stewart go three curveballs to Tommy White struck him out and he's going to that curveball more than I thought he would have. One two missed inside low two balls two strikes. Thought maybe he would just kind of give it as a show me pitch just to let him know he's got it there but he's going to throwing it for strikes pretty good command of it early. Brown awaits with Travinsky at first the 2 2 pitch ground ball but a bouncer foul first base side. Fans are Lady of the Lake proud to be LSU's championship health partner together LSU and our Lady of the Lake champions for Louisiana learn more at OLOLRMC.com slash LSU together we roar. Jake Brown the left hander the right handed hurler and delivers and it's fouled back into the screen. Bounces down the first baseline. How about a shout out to Bill Frankes, the legend here at LSU. They have played a ton of baseball over the last three days with one more day to come, and he's been here for all of it. The 2 2 called strike three on the inside corner. Nicely placed by Jackson Stewart, who records his third strikeout. One down here in the bottom of the second inning. But Frankes has been the public address voice. For every game played here this weekend, he hasn't left the building. <laughs> this is what to say. We, I'm sure we could do that math. I, I'm not going to do it today, but the number of games he's seen in the old Alex Box and then Alex Box Stadium, Skip Burtman Field here, it's, I'm sure, a number very high. This one misses outside. Ball one now to Jared Jones, sophomore first baseman hitting 286. Coach. Coach Jay yesterday told me he said I think I owe Bill a, a nice steak dinner after <laughs> doing all the work this weekend. Here's the 1 0 missed upstairs two balls well, and no strikes and and not that anybody is going to feel sorry for them but uh, how about a shout out to this four man umpiring crew. They also have done every game. But, uh, uh, absolutely. Probably not going to get a steak dinner from anybody. Here's the 2 0 upstairs misses ball three well you and I Chris were trying to figure out all the games that had been played that are going to be played and we we needed we needed Bill Frankes because we, we we you know there was Northwestern States in town of course LSU won't play Northwestern State but they've been playing everybody and it's been a been a really good baseball week weekend 3 0 strike on the outside corner They'll make it three and one Jones loaded up the bat. I'm not sure the full take was on, but nonetheless, it's now three and one. So a hitter's count. Jones yesterday trying to fight this win, took one deep to left center field, but the park held on. That pitch misses inside. Stewart gives up a walk. So back to back, or I should say two walks so far here in the bottom of the second. Not quite back to back. We'll put runners first and second for LSU. And we'll bring Stephen Milam to the plate. Freshman off to a great start. Jay Johnson just thrilled to know that Milam was going to be taking in the college experience coming to LSU to play baseball off to a 375 average again has done wonderful things at second base. We've seen him do great things at shortstop the future awfully bright for Steven Monster Milam who takes a couple of last minute instructions for Coach Johnson after a quick timeout. Now he'll come to the plate batting from the left side against the right hander. It was interested interested to see how he would handle shortstop and already had a couple plays there that made look easy. So I don't think he is uh, intimidated by playing short at the college level. Runners first and second with one out first pitch to Milam is going to hit him. Pitch inside he tried to bow out of the way but it catches him and that's going to load the bases now for LSU with one out. And Mac Bingham. Yeah got the. Backside shin, and even though Stewart's not a flamethrower, those uh, those hurt when they hit you in the shin. Milam kind of stretching it out, working it out at first base with Coach Wanaka. 
So Bingham the former Arizona Wildcat now current LSU Tiger comes to the plate big opportunity here Bingham batting 429. Four runs batted in but ducks on the pond here with a scoreless game the first pitch. Inside just missed it off speed and it's one and oh. Travinsky was walked. Brown struck out looking Jones walked Milam hit by a pitch and we're loaded up. Here's an opposite field bouncing ground ball to second coming over to make the play is Nelson. His only play is to first and that will score a run. Travinsky in from third and LSU takes a one nothing lead. Runners advance second and third on the force play at first for the second out of the inning. And as much as everybody probably wants to see a ball in the gap or a ball leave the yard with the bases loaded, sometimes that's what it takes. You know, in tough conditions, you just when you when you hear people talk about manufacture or say, you know, this team's got to manufacture runs, that's it. Draw a couple walks, get hit by a pitch. Axton Kling back to the top of the order. First pitch in on the hands, too far inside. It's one and zero. Oh. Kling flight out to left field to Eric Arado, his first time up back in the first. Runner second and third with two outs. Pitch is high. Did he go around? No, he did not. They appeal down to Douglas Vines. He said he held back, and it's 2 and 0. Oh. That's good to manufacture runs when it's less than two outs, and all you got to do is just make contact on the ground. But when it gets second and third, and you got two outs, this is what you need to hit in the clutch. Breaking ball in for a strike from Stewart. That'll make it 2 and 1. This is where you cement yourself in a lineup with a coach when early in the game you've got ducks on the pond and struggled the day before offensively, get that big hit. Missed away. Move the count now to three and one to Paxton Kling. First base open here. Tigers have Jones at third, Milam at second. Here's the three one to Kling. Stayed away wisely. Missed low and outside ball four. That'll quickly load the bases up once again. And now the pressure being applied to Jackson Stewart. Junior right hander out of Urbandale, Iowa. Started his career at Des Moines Area Community College. But already down 1 0. Bases loaded with two outs as this one smacked but fouled on the right field line off the bat of Pearson. Who absolutely yoked that one to the bullpen and right. Yeah, we talk about momentum in baseball, and you know, Stewart has walked three guys this inning and hit a batter. And the score is 1 0. Now, Pearson can get that big hit. It seems like it should be more with that many guys on base. The 0 1 missed inside. One ball, one strike to Pearson, who got a board on a fly ball to center field. An error committed by Charlie Parcell allowed him to reach second base. He was left stranded there. The 1 1 strike on the outer half will make it 1 and 2. And on the other side, if Stewart's able to get out this inning with just giving up one run, you'll see a little bit of the momentum go to Northern Illinois. So, big spot right here early in the game for LSU. The 1 2 to Pearson. Stays away in the dirt. Summerhill will track the baseball up the third base line. Even that count now to Pearson. A reminder scratch made dishes, wall to wall TVs, craft beers, and cocktails. Days like today were made for Walk On Sports Bistro. Find your nearest location or order online or in the app. Pitch misses low. Good eye by Pearson. That will fill the count now. Three and two. Walk on Sports Bistro for the win. Pearson stands in with a full count. Bases loaded, two outs. LSU up one nothing. Big moment early. Runners off and running. And the three two is a bouncing ground ball foul down the first base line. LSU when they are getting the pitches to hit, they're just a little out in front. Again, Stewart not a flamethrower. Even the fastball is going to be 85, 86. But he's been throwing a lot of cutters and the curveball. So you just got to stay back a little more. Payoff pitch to Pearson. Swing and he fouls this one back out of play. Trying to bear down, line it up here a little bit. Christian Seegers, the third baseman, playing basically in the shortstop position. Dimitrov, the shortstop, just left of second base to the left handed hitting Pearson, who again will bounce a foul ball down the first base line to keep it three and two. They're going to have to call a timeout to give all the base runners a, a, a little bit of a breather. <laughs> they didn't think it was track practice today. Third straight time they've been in full sprint at the pitch. Bases loaded, two outs. Another payoff delivery to the plate. Pearson awaits. Missed for ball four. That'll walk in a run. 
Here comes Jared Jones. It's 2 0 LSU. So now those free passes. Yep. As you mentioned, Buzzy, four walks, a hit batter. Now it's a 2 0 ball game. And there'll be a timeout and a meeting on the mound here with Northern Illinois. That's what, four walks and a hit by pitch. Again, 2 0. So it's. It's caught up with Stewart a little bit, but this is where if Tommy White could put one in a gap, then you really make the walks and the hit by pitches sting. No surprise they come out, have a quick meeting, get the infield straight, but certainly kind of dial Jackson Stewart in as he'll face Tommy White with the bases loaded. He was able to get Tommy with three straight curveballs, caught looking in the first inning. We'll see if he deviates from that and Tommy White adjusts and is ready for the breaking ball. First delivery, bouncing ground ball to short, backpedaling is Dimitrol. He'll throw to Nelson at second for the final out of the inning. The Tigers play two runs. They'll start with Spencer Bartell, the right-handed hitter. Lou Coleman now with a two-run lead. First pitch lifted in the air, foul, and giving a look is Jones, but the wind certainly carries that one out of play into the seats. We mentioned Bill Frank as the marathon man here. Voice of Alec Box Stadium. Todd Polite's another guy who never takes a day off. He's actually here enjoying the game as a fan slash employee. He heard <laughs> us. He said best guess well over 1300 games as a PA voice here at Alec Box Stadium. Both of course old and new. One and one, the count to Bartell. This pitch going to come in and hit him. So Holman with the first miscue of the game, hit by a pitch, will send the leadoff man and Bartell down to first base. Yeah, off speed pitch that just got away from Holman. Not going to see that too much as the control is really good. That's the way you want that shutdown inning that coaches talk about. You score the two runs in the bottom of the second, and you want to. Have your pitcher go out there and hang a zero, get your team back in and keep that momentum. Jake Nelson to the plate. He shows but brings it back. The pitch rides high for ball one. 1,300 games and counting yeah. for Mr. Frank is. Well, and I'd love to know if, you know, he sees any, if there's something that he hasn't seen yet on a ball, you know, in a game. I hear it every year. Again, showing but there's a strike from Holman to even it up one and one. And again, you talk about a guy who really enjoys doing what he does. It's really fun to watch Frank as when it's baseball season. Of course, it's for him, it's baseball season, just like the coaches year round, but certainly when the season comes around. Here's a quick move and throw over by Holman and getting back safely is Bartell. One ball, one strike to Nelson, batting 167 on the early season. Righty on righty matchup here with a 2 0 LSU lead. Holman again will check the runner. Now come to the plate with the 1 1. Say miss low, according to Kevin Sweeney, our home plate umpire, and it's 2 and 1. Of course, I mentioned those 1,300 games as PA voice. I mean, he goes to every LSU baseball. A few missed games over the years as an exception, certainly. 2 1. Swing and a miss. Evens it up two and two, but the sheer number of total baseball games that Bill Frank has his witness for LSU is astounding. One of the best. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out, runner on at first base. Holman fires, swing and a miss. Found the hole in the bat that time for Nelson. Holman records his fourth punch out of the day, one gone. Top third. Yeah, Nelson, or excuse me, Holman went to the breaking pitch the last two pitches. Nelson not able to square it up. And the first out of the inning, see if Holman can't work down in the zone, get a double play ball, second one of the game. Andre Dimitrol, the shortstop, batting in the nine spot today. Holman with a fastball missed inside, 1 0. Great crowd here, as you would expect. Third game, Saturday afternoon. 75 degrees. Who wouldn't want to be at the ballpark? Runner at first, he's off and running. Ground ball, hit and run attempt. Milam going to field it at short, try to get to second base. The runner beats him there. He'll throw to first to get the out at first base to Jones. So two gone. Well, there was a the double play ball. They just had Bartell in motion at first base. So I love the, the 
we call it the HWA play, the huddle win awareness play. Milam still tries to get the double play as he runs, and everyone was converging at second base at once, the runner and Milam, but uh, Bartell just able to beat the, the, the you know, Milam running to second, but gets the out at first. So nice job by the young shortstop. Jay Johnson coming out, wanted to visit with our second base umpire, Brandon Cooper. I think there was a quick discussion about, again, was there any interference? Do you get the sense at all? And I think similar to what we saw yesterday in the Stony Brook game, you had one of those plays where everybody, as you said, coming and converging to second base. Pearson coming over from second. Milam with the baseball trying to beat the runner. And obviously, Bartell coming into the bag. So the first conversation and the umpires said, nope, it's just one of those deals where Luckily, nobody had a major collision, but nobody had any wrong intent. And Jay Johnson satisfied with that goes back to the dugout. Charlie Parcell atop the order stands in. First pitch missed inside. This one way inside. Spins him off the plate. It's 2-0. and oh. Yeah, my, my thoughts on the interference play at second base, as long as that runner goes in and just slides directly into second base, I mean, there's nothing else you can really do. 2-0 pitch to Parcell. Ground ball to short. Again, Milam busy today. Scoops it up, throws to first. Jones easily has it for out number three. So the Huskies are done. No runs. No hits. They leave one man on. With the LSU Sports Radio Network. Brady Neal leads it off for LSU. They lead Northern Illinois 2-0 here as we move to the bottom of the third inning. First pitch to Neal. Squeeze between the mitt and the plate. Bounces left. It's ball one. 1-0 one -oh to Neal. He'll bounce a foul ball into the camera well just beyond the first base dugout. One ball, one strike. Fans, visit your local Toyota dealer. Check out the 2024 Toyota Tundra. This Tiger has earned its stripes. The 1-1. One -one. Ground ball, one hopper to second. Nelson fields it glove side. Throws the first one away. We got a second. Chris, want to give a little shout out to a buddy of mine watching us on TV over in Ascension Parish, Mason Kluot, Big East Ascension Spartan fan and LSU fan. We'll see Travinsky come in and takes a swing and on the hands, fouls it back, and it's 0 and 1. The 0 1 to Hayden. Popped him up. Here's second base. Dimitrol again using the glove, and it'll be the second baseman, Jake Nelson, as the wind carries it from left of second base to the right of the bag. Both Dimitrol and Nelson, almost identical spaces on either side of second base. Travinsky retired. Two outs. Now we'll see Jake Brown. Missing is Stewart. Outside of the left hander Brown caught looking in the second inning. Stewart's pitch foul back into the screen evens it up one and one Northern Illinois got a right hander in the bullpen. That's number 28 Jacob Drager getting loose playing a little catch. Stewart's one one to the plate to Brown a called strike and it's one and two. Two outs, the one two pitch. Brown skies it foul and will find the seats down the way and left. Actually, catch the overhang. You wonder if they have a baseball retrieval system built behind us here on the overhang. Because <laughs> here's a one two ground ball again, right to Nelson, the second baseman. It goes to his left, takes it in the glove, throws to first, and that'll do it. Tigers go quietly. One, two, three, no runs, no hits, nobody on base. But now is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Northern Illinois trailing 2 0 to LSU. They'll send up 2, 3, and 4. Arado, Summerhill, and Kelly do up to face Luke Coleman. Starting pitcher for the Tigers. He's ready to work. And the first pitch inside at the belt, it's 1 and 0. Holman, three innings so far, one hit given up. No runs, four strikeouts. Did hit a batter, but yet to walk anybody. Here's the 1 0. Foul on the second time around. I think he missed it with a swing, caught it on the backside. <laughs> it fouled it towards the LSU dugout. Chris, early thoughts on Holman. The scouting report didn't lie, did it? No. <laughs> a lot of strikes. Works quick. 
I mean, you could see why Alabama, you know, you see why he was a, a weekend starter for an SEC team. Here's the 1 1. This time in the air to left field near the line coming over Bingham. Great jump on it, gets it in fair territory in shallow left field near the left field line for out number one. It was interesting. I was talking to Jay in the clubhouse this morning. I said, Coach, you got home and going today. First outing, five and a third, struck out 10, gave up no runs, just three hits. What did you tell him you wanted to see today? And he just looked at me and said, Do that. <laughs> Sometimes Jay can be a man of few words. Uh, uh, it's, it's all it takes sometimes. Colin Summerhill to the plate with one out. Pitch to the right-hander. Has a strike on the inside corner from Holman, and it's nothing in one. The 0-1. Foul back into the screen. Nothing and two. Fan Seat Geek, the official ticket marketplace of LSU Athletics. Whether you're buying or selling baseball tickets, Seat Geek, the place to do it. Seat Geek, so Tiger fans can fan. Ahead in the count, home and ready to deal. The 0 2 pitch. Tried to nibble the outside corner, just missed it, but a good 0 2 pitch. It'll make it one and two now to Summerhill, who was caught looking by Holman in the first. Yeah, you're right, Chris. 93 mile an hour, 0 2. That's exactly where you want to put it. Summerhill couldn't get a bat on it if he wanted. The one two, a little flare, one hopper. Great job by Milam. Had to stop, wait on it. And fields it, throws to first in time. A heads up play. Started to charge initially there, but saw that it was dying quickly and was going to take one hop. He had to put on the brakes, field it off the bounce. But again, nice adjustment by the freshman Milam at shortstop. How funny is baseball? I mean, Milam gets the first start at shortstop. <laughs> He's getting every play hit to him. Two outs now. We'll see Mason Kelly had a base hit his first time up. Huh? That one misses a bit low. One ball, no strikes. He was left stranded at first base back in the second inning. The Tigers, two runs, no hits. Northern Illinois scoreless on one hit and one error committed. The 1 0. Way out in front, swing and a miss. Kelly. One ball, one strike. Kelly had a good game against LSU on Thursday. Had two hits. Was two for four, drove in a run, scored a run. The 1-1, one -one, swing and a miss. Got him to chase this one down and away. Now home and ahead, one and two. Again, that's been pretty consistent too, ahead of hitters. That's where Holman has worked today. With two outs, the one-two. Breaking ball, caught strike three. Luke Holman, I see you. Fifth strikeout of the day for the young man. LSU Sports Radio Network. Tigers will send up Jared Jones, followed by Stephen Milam. Mac Bingham as Jones launches the first pitch towards right field. Again, getting over to make the play is Bartell. Sounded great, looked great off the bat. Again, with Jones trying to go oppo. Just didn't get enough of the barrel as Bartell comes over to make the play. One pitch, quickly one out here to start at the bottom of the fourth inning. LSU leading two to nothing. We are the LSU Sports Radio Network, Chris. So I'm going to go ahead and just say an LSU does not have a hit. It's hard to believe with all the guys that have been on base, but LSU is still hitless in this game. Timeout call. Jay Johnson going to bring over Milam. He and Bingham will talk with the skipper here just uh, outside the on deck circle. Yeah, again, the Tigers two runs benefited by the error in center field back in the bottom of the second inning. Northern Illinois just one hit today. And again, conditions much like yesterday. It's beautiful when you look out on the ballpark. If you're a fan, you look out today and you say this is going to be a great day to be at the box. 75 degrees, blue skies, sunshine. If you're Jay Johnson, you come out and you look at that wind and the flagpoles and go, same conditions as yesterday, and I don't like it because the <laughs> wind is blowing brisk left to right. Again, and at times blowing in from left field towards the grandstand down the line at third. So, again, there's a very small sliver of jet stream that you can track into to right field. Other than that, you're fighting the wind when the ball gets in the air. Milam's first pitch low and away, and it's ball one to Milam from Stewart. Steven hit by a pitch in the second inning to help continue to load the bases for LSU. And again, the Tigers loaded the bases in that second inning, but only came away with two runs. 
as you mentioned Buzzy Jackson Stewart had to be thrilled with that coach Copeland had to be thrilled with that 2-0 to Milam swing and a miss and on the hands it makes it two and one now here's a crazy question that maybe only you could answer no disrespect to Jackson Stewart he is pitching a well of a game so far as the 2 1 chases upstairs does Milam comes up empty it's two and two but again the velocity is fastball 85 86 87 miles an hour using the breaking ball effectively good command early as that one misses low three and two the question I ask is for an LSU team that is used to seeing even in practice even yeah. in preseason mid 90s and above is it take an adjustment as this one misses outside and Milam again will get aboard this time by way of walk so a one out walk given up by Jackson Stewart that's his fourth base on balls given up my point is does it take adjustment when you're used to it sounds simple to all of us <laughs> lay people that well if you can hit 96 and 98 and 100 mile an hour fastballs why can't you get out there and bash something at 87 you know I'll compare it to this if you took this LSU baseball team and went play so slow pitch softball you'd be surprised how many guys probably wouldn't hit all that well because they would be out in front of everything they don't let the ball travel it does take a, an adjustment Chris because you know this more it more than that I think that the cutter that uh, Jackson Stewart is throwing is is messing them up more than the 85 86 mile an hour fastball Bingham at the plate took the first pitch for a ball here's a strike on the outside corner again I think Stewart's got great command again of the cutter as well as his breaking ball pitching effectively here for Northern Illinois he'll toss over to keep an eye on Milam who Kind of dancing down there at first base, toying with the fact with the wind conditions that maybe LSU tries to put on a hit and run, something they don't do a lot of. Here's another quick throw over by Stewart. Again, Milam easily back standing on the first base bag. Well, LSU made Northern Illinois and Stewart pay in the bottom of the second with all the walks and the hit by pitches, but Stewart up to five walks on the game. The 1 1 runner goes, and this one mashed to left field off the bat of Bingham. To the track, to the wall, Arado will watch it go. Two run blast into the teeth of the wind for Mac Bingham. His first home run of the year. And the Tigers strike for two here in the bottom of the fourth inning. That'll make it 4 nothing LSU. Wow, what a blast. Yeah, you said it best, Chris. Into the teeth of the wind, and you have, you've got to get it all. And Mac Bingham did. I mean, that ball was hit on a line. It was just ripping through the wind and got right over the fence in left field into the left field landing. But that'll hopefully get these Tigers going in the first hit of the game for LSU. What a hit it was. We'll see Paxton cling. The base is cleared and one out. Back to the top of the order. The first pitch missed high from Stewart 1 0. One zero to cling. Just missed outside. Make it two and zero. Paxton today flied out to left field. Got a board on a walk in that second inning. The Tigers had the bases loaded. Here's the two zero. Again trying to find it on the outside corner. Stewart just misses, according to Sweeney, our home plate umpire. It's three balls, no strikes. Cling taking and the pitch a strike. This time on the inner half, three and one. Three one pitch. Jambi pops it up. Behind the plate, giving a look is Summerhill, but again, it will catch the overhang. Out of play, three and two, the count to Paxton Kling. LSU Athletics would like to thank its team, LSU corporate partners. Cox, McDonald's, Our Lady of the Lake, Albertsons, Coca Cola, People's Health, and Hancock Whitney. LSU finally made the walk. Walks really hurt with Bingham's two run homer. You just can't put that many free passes on to a good team. Payoff delivery and Kling stays alive. Fouls it into the backstop. Still three and two. Jones would open the inning, fly it out to right field, put a charge into it. Just good play by Bartell and right. Milam would get that walk that Buzzy refers to, and then Bingham. Blast one to the left field landing to make it a 4 0 LSU lead. Another payoff pitch way outside from Stewart, and yet another walk for the Husky starter. That is base on balls number six. Now we'll see Josh Pearson 
come to the plate for the Tigers. Got a board on that air on a fly ball to center field. Earned a walk, drove in a run with the bases loaded in the second. You got Kling at first who can run. Pearson's got good wheels. This is where when LSU, if they do anything, it will be with these two guys. Runner goes. Pitch is low. The throw to second. Nowhere close. Paxton Kling easily steals that base. Second stolen base on the year. Got a great jump. And the pitch was low, and Summerhill tried to come up and fire, but Kling was already at the bag when the baseball got to the shortstop, Dimitrov. Now Paxton will take his lead off second with one out and a 1 0 count to Josh Pearson. The pitch low for ball two. Stewart at 82 pitches on the afternoon. So the pitch count starting to really get up there. Stewart from the stretch will look back to second base. 2 0 to Pearson. Swing. Base it into right field. Cling on his horse around third. They'll wave him in. The throw going to be cut off and an RBI single for Josh Pearson will make it 5 nothing LSU. Pearson with RBI number five, his fifth hit of the season. It does, Pearson does a good job staying on top of the baseball, letting it travel into him and just putting a good swing on it, hitting it in the right spot. And Kling with the good wheels coming around second base. Wasn't going to get the stop sign. Well, the Tikes Radio Network and the LSU Sports mobile app. A Bingham blast for LSU in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Helped the Tigers extend their lead. They lead 5 0 over Northern Illinois. Huskies have 5, 6, and 7. Harper to lead it off here. Looks at a 2 0 count. It's Luke Coleman's offense giving him a bigger lead so far. Four innings, one hit given up, five strikeouts for Holman. The 2 0. Launched in the air to center field, but not very deep. Clean coming in. Got a great jump on it and easily gets under it for out number one. Harper retired on the fly out to center. Now you love the pitch count, too, at, with Holman. He's at 51 pitches. Christian Seegers. Christian Seeger, the third baseman, 0 for 1, caught looking by Holman. One of those five strikeouts in his first plate appearance back in the second. Holman's pitch to the plate just outside 1 0. Big right hander Jacob Drager is still getting loose in Northern Illinois' bullpen. Holman's 1 0 pitch to the plate. That one for a strike, 1 and 1. Infield playing straight up here with the right handed hitting Seegers in the 1 1. Swing and a miss. Holman pulls the string, gets ahead one and two. A really good command from Holman with the breaking pitch all day today. And able to throw it for strikes. When he gets to two strikes, able to throw it as an out pitch and bury it. Seegers awaits. The one two popped up. Near first base, Jones in foul territory coming over, looking up, got the shades down, and makes the grab for out number two. Last weekend we were talking to fans. A lot of them wanted to see Jared Jones and his improvement from his freshman year, which was stellar, to his sophomore year. And the majority of fans saying we're just looking to see. We know what he does at the plate. We hope he continues to improve there. But to be the everyday first baseman, that's what people are looking at. And Jones has done a solid job, really playing well at first base defensively. Spencer Bartell at the plate, the pitch from Holman, low and away for ball one. Well, yeah, he's learning the position, and we. Had arguably one of the best first basemen yes. ever for the last three years, so hard to compare. The 1 0, a little high and outside. Two balls, no strikes to Bartell, who was hit by a pitch. Really, the only, I guess, blemish on otherwise a solid, impressive outing thus far for Luke Holman. The 2 0, sent back foul off the bat, 2 and 1. Two outs, Holman. Look 
second to make it another quick top half of the fifth. There's the 2 1. Another foul ball off the bat of Bartell will make it two balls and two strikes. Yeah, even when Holman gets down in the count, when he goes 2 0 to a hitter, you still got that confidence that he's just going to grip it and rip it right back in the zone. And he's done that to even it back up 2 to 2. Time called by Kevin Sweeney as they were getting a personnel member from the bullpen into the dugout down the first baseline. Now he gives the green light to Holman. Two outs, nobody on, a 2 2 count. Bartell awaits, and the pitch to the plate. Strike three at the letters. Strikeout number six, a half dozen for Luke. New pitcher in, Jacob Drager takes over for the Huskies. He'll face Brady Neal to lead things off here. Neal on the day, 0 for 2, a strikeout. Grounded out to the second baseman Nelson last time in the third. That pitch from Drager missed low. It's 1 0. Right hander. Rares back, fires, misses outside. Two balls, no strikes. Yeah, Drager making his second appearance of the year. Thrown two innings, given up one hit, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. Fastball is going to be mid to upper 80s. Showing bunt, brings it back, a strike across the plate, make it two and one. Defensively, the Huskies have Christian Seegers, the third baseman. Playing towards second base and just off the infield cut, anticipating maybe Neal will try to lay down a bunt. Looking to swing here, the pitch is high and outside. Ball three, three and one. Neal, Travinsky, and Brown do up for the Tigers. Part of the order so far, 0 for 5 at the plate. 3 1. Missed for ball four. So Neal will reach first base for the first time today with a leadoff walk from Jacob Drager, who just entered the game. Not sure that's exactly what Coach Copeland was looking for, and I'm sure that wasn't what Drager had in mind. <laughs> well, with Stu Stewart now out of the game, starting pitcher for Northern Illinois, you can close the book on him. He went four innings, two hits, five runs, six walks, and the three strikeouts. Neal takes his leadoff first. We'll see Travinsky, who got aboard on a walk in the second and scored. Popped out to second baseman Nelson in the third. He'll smack this one foul down the third base line. It's 0 and 1. Again, if you just heard Buzzy, only two hits today for LSU. One of them a two run bomb by Mac Bingham. One error led to some trouble for the Huskies in the Bottom of the second, allowing LSU to plate two runs, including a walk with the bases loaded. And then an RBI single following that home run from Bingham off the bat of Josh Pearson. Pitch to Travinsky again, skies this one shallow right field. Bartell coming in, playing it with the wind, and squeezes it for out number one. Just nothing seems easy when that ball gets in the air today. Fans enjoy the best barbecue at TJ Ribs, official barbecue restaurant of LSU Athletics, and proud host of the LSU Head Coaches Show. The season premiere of the Jay Johnson Show will come your way on March 18th at 6 p.m. Come join us there on Acadian Thruway. Visit tjribs.com. Place your order now. Jake Brown looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 2 today. Pitch from Drager outside ball one. Brown batting 389. He was caught looking in the second. Ground out to Nelson at second base. When he came to the plate in the third inning. Still Neal at first base. Now Drager got him leaning and throws over. And Brady just got back in time. Brady Neal, when Travinsky was at the plate, did the fake steal sprint about a quarter of the way to second base. I'm not sure if he was planning to run that time but he was leaning but luckily got back. He is off and running 1 0 pitch a called strike a one hop throw down to second tag applied and Neil out at second base. That time the throw from Summerhill took a one hop. Dimitrov gloved it laid down the glove and Neil the race soon. Listening live on the LSU Sports Radio Network on the SEC Network Plus. Buzzy Heidel, Chris Blair, enjoying the afternoon along with you as LSU leads 5-0 over Northern Illinois. 
Jake Nelson to lead it off for the Huskies. Batting in the eighth spot. He's 0 for 1, a strikeout victim to Holman. Back in the third, a half dozen Ks so far for Holman, who starts out 0 and 2 here against Nelson. A couple of fastballs. Nelson down in the count early. Holman, the 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Golf swing that time from Nelson. He missed the tee. <laughs> And Holman records strikeout number seven. So, Buzzy, it leads me right into the question I wanted to ask. Last week, five and a third against Central Arkansas. Great performance by Holman. We talked yesterday about maybe having Thatcher Hurd go a little bit more deep into the game. Jay Johnson doing just that. This one off the end of the bat, headed towards center field, going to drop down between Pearson and Kling. So, a one out single. For Dimitrov. If you're Jay Johnson, what do you think the thought process is today with Holman? Again, only giving up his second hit of the day, and as we mentioned, seven strikeouts, one hit batter, and so far, no walks. As far as the time he'll go, I mean, you're looking at that pitch count. He's at 64 pitches. I, I would think he, he could go as long as close to 100 pitches. I mean, if he keeps throwing like he has been, I, I, I don't see a reason why he can't go another two, possibly even three innings. Nobody's down in LSU's bullpen at the moment even thinking about getting loose. Parcel top of the order at the plate. First pitch low and inside from Holman. It's one and zero. Oh. Demetral will take his lead. Extend it three steps off first base. Holman will glance over. The one zero to the plate, showing a late bunt, trying to drag it, but pops it straight up first base side. One ball, one strike. But you see why he limited batters last year in the SEC to a 191 average. That was second lowest in the SEC. I mean, he continues. He fills up the strike zone. He works quick. Uh, you know, he just he makes you earn everything. And that's why, you know, Jay Johnson spoke so highly of him before the season and is so confident giving him the ball in the weekend. 1-1 one, one called strike. The outer part of the plate to a left-handed hitter. Nicely done by Holman. It's 1-2. and two. That's what I'm here for, though, Buzzy. I asked the <laughs> obvious question. I'm setting you up. You knock him down. That's it. That's Runner you... at first and a quick throw over to check on Dimitrov, and he's back safely. You're best in the business, Chris. You just make us look good. <laughs> Captain obvious. It's hard to make uh, Doug look good, but, you know. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. Holman again. Looking over to first, but now the one two off speed upstairs, two and two the count. Grandstand field in nicely today. Lots of fans in the left field landing and in the diamond deck. Here's a swing and a miss. Right over the top of the baseballs. It dropped off the table and down on strikes goes Parcells. For the second time today, that's strikeout number eight for Luke Holman. And that's the pitch with two strikes. That's the one I'm talking about, the the bury me pitch or the pitch to try to strike the guy out. He can throw it for a strike early in the count, a curveball, and then he can, with two strikes, get you to chase one. Very good command all day of that pitch. Again, a runner at first, two down. We'll see Arado, the left fielder. Is this off-speed pitch missed high, 1-0. A reminder when the Tigers win, fans you win. Enter promo code LSU50. Day after an LSU baseball win, you'll receive 50% off your online order at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Holman's 1 0 pitch comes back with a fastball lifted to left field. On the run is Bingham, and Bingham able to track it down for out number three. So no runs, one hit, that man left it straight. Tigers. This is the LSU Sports Radio Network. Five runs on two hits. No runs, two hits. That's the difference in the game. LSU up 5 nothing over Northern Illinois. Jared Jones to lead it off for LSU. First pitch is strike. Jacob Drager, the relief pitcher for the Huskies. Came in there in the bottom of the fifth inning. Here's the 0-1 to Jones. Sails away, down and low. One ball, one strike. 
Jones today a walk scored in the second fly out to right field. In the fourth inning. Pitch from Drager down in the dirt. Two balls one strike. Right handed pitcher Christian Little starting to play catch in LSU's bullpen. Two balls, one strike. Jones from Marietta, Georgia awaits. Takes a big swing, pops it high in the air to right field. The wind carried it back. Bartell right at the track, able to get to it. Again, it went up. Looked like it would be a routine fly ball. Catches that jet stream, and suddenly Spencer Bartell was in for a battle as he makes his way just shy of the warning track and holds on for out number one. Fans winter may be behind us. Well, who knows, but don't let AC or heater outages keep you on the bench this year. Text home run to 31996. Get your $59 AC system check. AccuTemp Services, proud partner of LSU Athletics. That brings Milam to the plate. He will put a bat on a ball, a little one hopper to first. Mason Kelly fields it, steps on the bag unassisted, quickly two down. So to the bottom of the order, Mac Bingham. A little Bingham blast in the fourth inning. Matt came to the plate, Buzzy said, "What win?" Hit it right through the win. That ball. Yeah, yeah, you had a hard time convincing me that a home run was going to leave to left field. Right field, I, I actually think the it's aiding balls as we just saw Jared Jones pop up, get to the warning track almost. He'll face Drager for the first time. And first pitch missed inside, one and zero. Oh. Did drive in a run. In that second inning on a ground out to Nelson at second base. So now seven runs batted in on the year. For Bingham. There's a strike to make it one and one. Another opportunity for Jay Johnson to. Get reteamed with a former Wildcat from Arizona. This one in the dirt. It's off the top of the plate goes to the backstop make it two and one. You know, Jay all of last year and even year number one. Talked a lot about. What it means to be successful in his program what it takes day after day. 2 1 breaking ball in for a strike nicely done by Drager and it's 2 and 2. So when you go into the portal and you bring a guy who certainly knows that culture. Makes the transition you would expect a lot easier. Bring him off to a great start here as a Tiger. The 2 2 little slow rolling ground ball coming over as Seegers. He will field it, pump, throw to first, and just in time to beat the speedy Bingham down the line for eight out number three. So the Tigers. Northern Illinois comes to the plate. They trail 5 0 to LSU. 3 4 and 5 do up. Summerhill looks at the first pitch from Holman. Sends it high in the air to center field with Paxton clean backing up and a couple of steps forward. He will have it for the first out of the inning. So one pitch and one out for Luke Holman, who again starts his seventh inning of work, six and a third so far, just two hits given up and a bunch of zeros on the ledger. Buzzy, no yeah. runs, no walks, eight strikeouts, did hit one batter, that's all. With one out, we'll see Mason Kelly, a right hander. Bat for the third time today. Pitch missing the low and the breaking ball. It's one and zero. Yeah, it's been a great outing. You still got Christian Little getting loose. It'd be interesting to see if Holman with that first pitch, one pitch, one out, if he has a quick inning as a swing and a miss there from Kelly. But if if he has a quick inning here, if if they go to Christian Little next inning or they give Holman one more. Again, as Buzzy mentioned, pitch count very low. Just the 75th pitch here, and it's a bouncing ground ball to third. White will charge in. The throw high. Jones trying to come down. Retrieves it. Touches the bag. Out number two. What was our conversation earlier about Jared Jones at first base? The throw from White was high because, again, credit Kelly. He was really moving down the first baseline. Jones had to go up first, make sure he got the baseball, and then he just used gravity to bring. That big guy down on the bag. Well, as and we're going to get a look at it, they're going to challenge yeah. the ruling at first base. They'll review it, but as good as Trey Morgan had been for the last three years, if a ball was so high that he couldn't catch it, previous play is under review. So there'd have been no chance for Trey Morgan to catch that ball because he's just not tall enough. But right. Jared Jones, being that tall, was able to 
catch the high throw from Tommy White and come down on it. I don't know. In, in, in real speed, Chris, I couldn't tell if he came down in time. The umpire was emphatic about the, the call. We'll see the replay here again. Jones off both feet, retrieves it, coming down. Who gets the foot on the bag first? Looks like Jones, but it's very close. It's super close. I think it'll hold up. Yeah, I'm not, in, uh, I'm not sure. There's another angle coming from right field. Trying to see the toe. Yeah, the toe's on the bag before the foot by Kelly reaches first base. So we'll get a decision here after a fairly quick review. After review, the play at first base is confirmed. Out. Northern Illinois has one challenge remaining. Great job by Jones. Again, used all 253 pounds to get gravity to put him back on the bag. But as you mentioned, standing at six foot four, he used all of that <laughs> to get the baseball. Two down. That'll bring Aaron Harper to the plate. Breaking ball missed outside for ball one, one and zero. Oh. Harper today hit into a double play in the second, flied out to cling and center in the fifth. Righty on righty matchup. Holman fires in the 1 0 again just off the plate. Two balls, no strikes. That was pitch number 77 for Luke Holman. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Ground ball, chopper to short. Milam waits on it. Pumps, fires to first. And that'll do it for the Huskies here in the top of the seventh inning. Holman, quick work again. They're very impressive. You like the consistency, Buzzy, because the numbers look very similar to last week. He's gone seven innings so far today. Just two huts, hits given up, eight strikeouts, one hit by pitch, but has been efficient, has pounded the strike zone, and his offense so far has given him a 5 nothing lead to work with. Paxton Kling looking for more for LSU. will lead it off. First pitch to Kling from new relief pitcher Ryan Linkletter, who checked into the game. Second time we've seen Linkletter against the Tigers this weekend. First pitch a strike. It's 0 and 1. Right hander. Delivers the 0 1 clean knocks this one to center field. Parcel was playing deep. He's on the run. Can't get to it. It'll bounce in front of him clean with a base hit. His first of the day the Tigers third hit of the afternoon now make it three bingo pest products base hits. Kling, leadoff man aboard for LSU. Yeah, Link Letter, the senior right-hander out of McHenry, Illinois, making his third appearance of the year in four and a third innings pitch, giving up five hits, five runs, no walks, and two strikeouts. He's 86 to 88 miles an hour with the fastball, kind of a three-quarter delivery. Fastball slider guy. Josh Pearson, one for two on the day, had a base hit with an RBI in that fourth inning, squares the bunt, brings it back, pitch high and outside from Link Letter. It's 1-0. Pearson aboard in the first inning on an error by Charlie Purcell in center field and walked with a bases loaded, drove in a run. So two ribbies today for Pearson. Throw over to keep an eye on Paxton Kling, who already has a stolen base. Got three on the season. Kling again will stretch his lead, three plus off the first base bag. Link letter to the plate again showing bunt and having to dodge out of the way that pitch right over the head of Pearson 2 and 0. Northern Illinois does have a left hander getting loose in their bullpen. That's number 16 Reagan Clawwitter. Showing bunt Pearson brings it back the pitch low and away to the left hander 3 and 0. Playing with a leadoff single again takes his lead off of first the 3 0 pitch to Pearson take his on it's a called strike three and one. Again a reminder don't let AC or heater outages keep you on the bench this year text home run to three one nine nine six. Get your fifty nine dollar AC system check from AccuTemp services proud partner of LSU athletics. Quick throw over clean back to first base quickly. A lot of times you'll see a three one you'll see coaches put the runner in motion if it's a good pitch you expect your hitter a good hitter like Pearson to swing at it if it's a ball then it's ball four 
Runner goes the 3 1. Knocked to right field on a line drive. Going to be fielded by Bartell. Kling trying to get back to first, and his speed gets him there in time. As the throw brought Kelly off the first base bag. So, first out of the inning, Kling arrives back to first safely after off and running with the pitch. That's a luxury you have with the speed of Paxton Kling. <laughs> well, good awareness by Paxton Kling, too. Of he was full out sprinting, stealing second base, and was able to peek in, see where the ball was hit. Pearson hit a missile to the right fielder, Bartell. Was able to get back in time to avoid the double play. Now we'll see Tommy White. He's 0 for 3 today. And the first pitch, ground ball smoked up the middle. Nelson able to get it, flips it to Dimitrov. The throw to first in time, and they turn the double play. Absolutely burn that baseball up the middle. Got eight for Northern Illinois. LSU leading 5 0. Seegers on the day 0 for 2 in the six hole. Face Little for the first time. Little fires, first pitch low, and it's one ball, no strikes. Christian Little making his second appearance of the year. He's thrown one and a third inning, giving up one hit, one run, one walk, and one strikeout. Double barrel action in both bullpens. We'll get you some numbers and names here shortly. The 1 0 strike on the outside corner to even it up one and one. Got right hander Gavin Gidry number one getting loose in LSU's bullpen and that's left hander number six Justin lower also getting loose. The 1 1 from little breaking ball in for a strike it's ahead one and two. That's still left hander number 16 Reagan Clawwitter. Right hander Connor Lutz. The one two from Little tried to nibble the outside corner and just missed. Little thought maybe he got him. Ruled ball two, two and two. Seegers caught looking by Holman in the second. Popped out foul territory, third base side, or rather first base side in the first. Here's a swing and a miss. Got him to chase that one. Off speed from Little down on strikes goes Seegers. One down, top of the eighth. That pitch. Much like a, much like what Stewart threw early in the game for Northern Illinois, a cutter, but just at 87 miles an hour, that becomes a really difficult pitch to hit, working off the plate to a right-handed hitter. Spencer Bartell will take a swing and come up empty on the first offering. A fastball from Little. It's 0-1. Little working quickly in the 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball missed outside. One ball, one strike. Bartell today hit by a pitch. Really, as I said, really the only thing that would take away from a great outing. It was a great outing for Luke Coleman. He was hit by a pitch in the third. And then came back to strike him out looking in the fifth inning. Two and one as that pitch missed outside from Little. Bartell was one for two in yesterday's win against Northwestern State. He had four RBIs in that game. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Ooh, pretty good down the middle with a fastball. It does say, missed maybe at the letters, it's three and one. One out, nobody on. Little looking for the strike zone. The 3 1 pitch catches the outer half. That'll fill it up 3 and 2. Little started his career, as everyone knows, at Vanderbilt 2021 and 22. Had 32 appearances for the doors, as there's a strike three. They say he went around. Bartell tried to stay away from a pitch up in the zone, couldn't do so, and Little with the punch out. Two gone. Yeah, it was a hair up. I thought it was a Right on the borderline, but a pretty good pitch with two strikes. I think home plate umpire Kevin Sweeney called the check swing, but again, it was pretty close with two strikes to take anyway. Second strikeout in as many batters faced, and now it'll be up to Nelson to try to get something going for Northern Illinois with two outs. They're running out of outs here in the top of the eighth. Little fires, that fastball off the mark outside 1 0. Now Christian Little, I think Ellis shoes. Uh, this is a guy that they want to see make the jump. He has spurts of greatness, and the, the talent's there. I mean, the fastball's 93, 4, 5 miles an hour. Got the good cutter. The 1 0. High and inside at 94, 2 0. 
he just can get ahead of hitters. That's sometimes his Achilles heel. He'll get behind and kind of get predictable from a pitch selection standpoint. 2 0 upstairs, missing ball three. Kind of expect this year for Little to probably be in the mix similar to last year and get some midweek starts. Certainly be relied upon out of the bullpen and conference play and on the weekends. 3 0 pitch to take on. That one's a fastball down the middle. 3 and 1. Pinch hitter for Nero in, by the way, for Nelson. They go to the bench and for Nero will. Swing and miss at this one. That'll fill the count three and two. Bernaro with his fourth plate appearance. 0 for three coming into this pinch hit at bat. Two outs, nobody on. Payoff pitch from Little. Missed tie ball four. So Fornero will work the two out walk. Dimitrol, the shortstop, will come to bat. One for two in the nine hole today. Grounded out back in the third. Had a base hit left stranded in the sixth. Again, only two hits today for Northern Illinois. LSU leading 5 0. Only three hits for the Tigers. On a blustery, windy day at the box. First pitch to Dimitrov. Launches to left center field on the run. Cling. Like a gazelle. Chases it down in left center field for out number three. So two to the plate, bottom of the eighth. They lead Northern Illinois five nothing. Got the win over the Huskies on Thursday in the first game of this four game weekend by a final of ten to two. Ethan Fry will start it off. He'll come in to pinch hit for Brady Neal. So Fry, the right-handed hitter, is eighth at bat of the season. He'll face a new left-hander, Reagan Clawitter will take over for the Huskies on the mound. First pitch is strike to Fry, and it's 0-1. Now Clawitter making his third appearance of the year. One and a third innings pitch, giving up five hits, one run, no walks, and no strikeouts. Ethan Fry launches this to center field. Parcell trying to use the glove to fight the sun, but settles under it for out number one. Chris, so Fry retired. Well, I got a little time. Give you a scoreboard update. One final already. Tennessee Wins big over University of Albany 21 to 6. A couple games in progress. Top of the six. Auburn leading Wichita State 15 to 6. Looks like Clawwater was in to face one batter. They'll make a quick pitching change here for the Huskies, powered by your hometown John Deere dealer, Sunshine. So they'll go to a right hander to face Hayden Travinsky, who right now appears will bat for him. They reach base by way of walk and score to run. In the second inning, so he'll face Connor Lutz. First pitch from Lutz. Travinsky once again pops it high in the air, right field. This one, though, Bartell coming over near the line has room in fair territory to make the grab for out number two. So, two quick outs here for LSU against two different pitchers. They'll stick with Lutz, it appears, Buzzy, and you can tell us about him. Yeah, Connor Lutz. Making his first appearance, appearance of the year, junior right-hander, 6'4", 215 pounds out of Libertyville, Illinois. And he's 84 to 88 miles an hour. Fastball slider, curveball and changeup, but it's mostly fastball slider. And the slider will be cutterish at times, so just a quick short break. Ashton Larson going to come in to pinch hit here for Jake Brown. So Larson, a left hander, faced the right hander with two outs. First pitch missing, ball one. 1 0, misses outside. Ball two, 2 0. Oh. Larson batting, 667, two for three to start the year with a run scored. A couple of ribby as well. Nobody on, two outs, the 2 0. Oh. Larson stays away from a pitch inside they appeal to third Jeff head says no he did not go around so now three and oh a couple more scores from around the league Chris bottom of the six in Columbia Belmont is leading against South Carolina five to two and Georgia North Kentucky are tied up two apiece ball fours it's off the top of the plate so Larson comes in for a pinch and earns a walk couple of other ones Texas A&M blanking Wagner two to nothing in the bottom of the second and how about this Georgia Southern leading over Mississippi State four to nothing early in that game top of the third so now we'll see Jared Jones Jones a couple of fly ball outs to right field trying to ride the win did get aboard on a walk and scored in the second first pitch 
Strike on the outer half of the knees from Lutz, and it's 0-1. Find out how you can build a better workday, fans, every day with Cintas. Visit Cintas.com. Get ready for the workday. Larson, sizable leadoff first. Lutz will look over and now throw. Almost had to as Larson was a good five, six steps off the first base bag. Lutz gets the ball back in his hand. Larson again, sizable lead. Pitch to the plate. Low and outside. One ball, one strike to Jared Jones. Jones batting 261 against seven runs batted in so far. Three home runs and one triple. 1-1. One, one. Missed high. Two balls, one strike. Chris, I believe that's number 20, Ryan Kucherak at first base. They put in a pinch runner? Yeah, I think yep. so. They did. Kucherak is the pinch runner. He's the one with a sizable lead. He takes it again. It's a good one. He's off and running. The 2 1 pitch outside. There'll be no throw as he will stand up going into second base. So Kucherak, the pinch runner, in with a stolen base. With two outs. The Tigers now a runner in scoring position. Three one pitch to Jones upstairs ball four. Second time Jones has reached base by way of walk today. So LSU now something cooking here with two outs runners first and second Summerhill going to call for time and slowly make his way out to the mound talking over here with Connor Lutz gives me a chance to remind you when things heat up this summer and when they heat up on the field for LSU baseball whenever you're ready to cool it down count on slow melt ice colder cleaner and longer lasting. Since 1997, Slow Melt Ice has been a leader in providing packaged ice, bulk ice for commercial, industrial, and retail businesses here in South Louisiana. For more info, check them out at slowmeltice.com. That's S L O M E L T I C E.com. Two outs, two men on. Sharply hit ground ball off the bat of Milam, but handled by Kelly at first base behind the bag. A little backhand pick going backward, but he gets to the base in time for out. Top of the ninth inning, five nothing LSU leads. Trying to make it two wins over the Huskies this weekend. Defeated Northern Illinois ten to two on Thursday. A couple of changes in the field. Had some pinch hitters, a pinch runner. Alex Malaza will take over for Travinsky behind the plate. Ben Napol takes over at third for Tommy White. Josh Pearson at second base now moves to right field. And Kucherak, who came into pinch run, will play at second base. Justin Lower comes in trying to finish the game here. Third pitcher of the day for the Tigers. First pitch to Parcell, the top of the order for the Huskies. Misses low and inside, or rather called strike inside, 0 and 1. Here's a swing and a foul tip held on to by Malazzo. Quickly, Justin Lower ahead, nothing in two. Yeah, Lower, the big left hander, transfer out of Xavier University. The 0 2 pitch. Just missed. Nice placement. Outer part of the plate. No chance for Parcel to chase or certainly get a bat on it, but it missed outside for ball one. The one two lower working quickly as it's fouled off the end of the bat. Slow roller to the third base dugout. Still one and two. Lower making his third appearance of the year. Thrown two and a third inning, giving up three hits. No earned runs, one walk, and four strikeouts in that two and a third innings. Here's the one two pitch and a swing and a miss. Justin Lower comes in. Records the punch out. One down, two to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU as Parcel down on strikes. I think this is going to be a big piece of the puzzle for LSU out of the bullpen. A left handed arm that can get left handers and righties out, but he's really tough on left handers as got kind of a whippy action towards the plate. Get a chance to see it here, possibly with Eric Arado to the plate. First delivery, breaking ball, miss low. 1 and 0 now to Arado, who 0 for 3 in the two spot today. Ground out, a couple of fly outs to left. There's the breaking ball across the plate, right at the belt, and it's 1 and 1. Yeah, he was second team All Big East Conference in 2023. Made 29 appearances, did start one game last year. 1 1, fouled back. Again, lower staying ahead. One ball, two strikes. How about this? Posted a six and two record last year with a 1.89 ERA and seven saves. 
in 57 innings, 63 strikeouts, a 182 opponent's batting average. This one got loose. Good job by Malazzo dropping the glove and fielding it outside. Two balls, two strikes to Arado now. Lower the left hander with a 2 2 pitch and a late swing and a foul. Just above the third base dugout of the Huskies. Fans, Dudley DeBosier, they stand up for the purple and gold. They fight for Tiger fans all across Louisiana. Dudley DeBosier, proud to be an official partner of LSU Athletics. One out, the 2 2 pitch down in the dirt, blocked up by Malazzo. That will fill the count now to Arado, the left fielder. Payoff delivery too far inside just missed the hands of Arado and he will earn the walk so a strikeout now a walk one down top of the ninth. Barn a pinch hitter will see the catcher Summerhill. It will be Summerhill he'll come out with the plate and with the bat to the plate he's over three today. Lower after giving up the walk works from the stretch and will come to the plate way upstairs outside one ball and no strikes. Right hander Gavin Guidry starting to just toss a little bit down in LSU's bullpen. Lower again we'll look at the runner in Arado at first now the 1 0 inside and Summerhill stays back two balls no strikes that's going to bring Nate Yeski. Out of the Tiger dugout. Come in and check on Justin Lord. Give him a little pep talk. Fans help shape the future of medicine. You can join a clinical trial at Velocity Clinical Research, where participants can receive compensation, access potential medicines and development, and get study related exams at no cost. Find a study near you at velocitytrials.com. The pitching line today for LSU, very good, and it starts with Luke Coleman. Second great outing. Of the season, seven full innings, just two hits, no runs, no walks, and eight strikeouts. He threw 77 pitches. He did hit one batter. But exactly what Jay Johnson wanted to see in his second outing of the season. Christian Little worked an inning, no hits, no runs, one walk, two strikeouts. And now the baseball and confidence in the hands of Justin Lower. Got a strikeout to start here in the top of the ninth inning, walked a batter. Now behind in the count, 2 0 oh here to Colin Summerhill. Lowers pitch, a strike at the knees, make it 2 and 1. Good message from <laughs> Nate Yeski. Must have worked. Doug and I talk about that all the time. I don't know what they say, but what the percentage of strikes is after a coach goes to talk to the pitch, it's got to be like 98%. Lower brings the 2 1 pitch in on the hands, but muscled out to center field. Cling on the run, can't get to it. It's over his head. Bounces his way to the wall. Arado around second, now waved around third. There'll be no throw, and the Huskies avoid a shutout with an RBI double off the bat of Summerhill. His first hit of the day. That will play to run, and it's now 5 1 LSU. Well, just goes to show you as a hitter, you get yourself in good hitters' counts, and when pitchers can become predictable, it, it's it's easier to hit. And he got a fastball at a two-one count right down the middle, and balls that are hit to center and left field, you really got to hit them to get through that win. That one was hit right on the nose, was able to get over Paxton Kling's head. Mason Kelly now comes to the plate with a runner at second base. Lower delivers a first pitch strike, 0 and one. Now we'll see Justin Lohr work with a little bit of trouble here after giving up the first run of the game to the Huskies. Runner at second, still just one out. The 0 1. This one a base hit down the line in left field. That'll score another run. Summerhill easily in to score. Back to back RBI doubles. This one off the bat of Kelly. And now it's a 5 2 ball game. Again, Buzzy told you earlier that Gidry was soft tossing down there. Now he's on the bump, and Jay Johnson on his way out. So 
So a meeting on the mound here with one out. The Tigers came into the top of the ninth, leading five nothing. But this Husky squad not finishing up their weekend without great effort here, making a five-two game. Parcell started the inning, struck out swinging. Justin Lohr was off and running, but then a walk and back-to-back -back doubles that made it a little tighter, more tight than Jay Johnson would like. So he'll make a pitching change, powered by your hometown John Deere dealer, Sunshine. Lohr is done. He'll get a hand from the crowd. Gavin Gidry going to take over, try to find two out. Played two runs here in the top of the ninth. So with one out, Jay Johnson calls upon Gavin Gidry onto the mound. He'll face off against Aaron Harper again with a runner at second base. Gidry first pitch to the plate strike on the outside corner with a breaking ball 0 and 1. Gidry right hand 6 2 178 pound sophomore out of Lake Charles Louisiana. Making his third appearance of the year. Swung on popped up into the air to center field. Clinton takes a couple of steps back now running forward. Comes in, makes the grab. Two down, one to go for the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Runner stays put at second base. And barring a pinch hitter, it'll be up to Christian Seegers, the third baseman, who's 0 for 3 today. A couple of strikeouts, fouled out first base side. To come in with Kelly down at second base. This will be the final game here in Baton Rouge for Northern Illinois. This will be their fourth game of the weekend. Gidry's pitch down the middle for a strike. Oh and one. The L one pitch swing and a miss. Nothing in two is Gidry. Going going with the off speed on the first two deliveries finding the strike zone. Tiger fans now making some noise get on their feet two outs top of the ninth leading five to two the pitch. High in the air to left field. Going back is Bingham Bingham. Shy of the track, squeezes it for out number three. Tigers win, Tigers win. Defeat Northern Illinois for the second time this weekend on a five.